Lecture 3, Basic Descriptive Statistics and Introduction Following the scientific method of research, as we outlined in the previous lecture, having defined the research problem, designed the research instruments to collect the data, and collected the data itself, the next step is to summarise, analyse and interpret the data. We use descriptive statistics as part of this process, helping us as researchers identify and explore patterns in the data collected. In this series of lectures, we are going to have a look at descriptive statistics. So what are descriptive statistics? They are exactly what they say. They describe what data is or what data shows. These type of statistics are different from inferential statistics and as that title suggests, inferential statistics are used to infer conclusions from the data and make generalizations to the population. When using descriptive statistics, we are usually conducting what we call univariate analysis. Univariate analysis is the analysis of one variable at a time, so describing the characteristics of each variable. When we conduct univariate analysis, there are a number of different common approaches that we tend to use. The first is actually looking at what we call measures of distribution. The second is looking at measures of central tendency and the third is looking at measures of dispersion. We're going to describe and examine each one of these through the next few series of lectures. So if we start with the first one, that's measures of distribution. What we're really looking at here um, is distribution is really a summary for each variable of the frequency or the number of times a value or range of values occurs. So Examples of that might be um, the number and percentage of males and females or, for example, the age of research participants. Frequency tables um, are one of the most common methods that we use to actually go about describing a single variable, so to go about conducting univariate analysis. They are used to describe uh, nominal and ordinal variables, so those within a category, i.e. Um, yes or no, or from strongly agree to strongly disagree, so that's a nominal and an ordinal variable. If we think about it logically, frequency tables wouldn't be very useful for scale variables, so those are interval and ratio variables. You would just end up with a very, very, very long list of, say for example, height or weight measurements, for example. If you group these individual measurements into some form of category, i.e. moving, as we talked about in the last slide, in the last lecture, moving from looking at a scale, var a scale variable and compacting that down and creating an ordinal variable out of it. So if you move that into some form of ordinal variable into categories, um, so for example, if we're thinking about weight, um, moving into, say, 0 to 10 kilograms and 10 kilograms to 20 kilograms and so on, so making an ordinal variable, then a frequency table would make complete sense. Frequency tables, they are generally depicted in one of two ways. The first is through um, a table and the second is through a chart. In this particular lecture, we are going to look at frequency tables. The slide series within this program that looks at presenting data is going to have a look at charts. So in this lecture series, we're going to concentrate on frequency tables. So here you can see an example of a frequency table. The basic rules that apply with a frequency table are that the variables are in columns, as you can see by the arrow there, and cases or records for each variable are reported in rows. Now cases can be represented in frequency tables in either number or percentage form. It depends on what the research is trying to show. Sometimes it is useful to show both and other times it is useful to show one or either of them. Frequency tables can be depicted also as a bar chart Okay, and we're going to be covering this later on in this lecture series when we have a look at presenting data. You'll see here in this frequency table, this frequency table is useful to show you other things um, that you may well see when producing a frequency table or when examining one. 
You'll see here on the bottom of the first column, on the second row um, up from the bottom, you'll see something that's called missing. Now, missing data, um, whilst it may appear at first not to be very useful, missing data actually is incredibly useful, as it shows us as researchers how many people did not record a response to a particular question. Now, the reasons for people not responding um, or not providing a response to a particular question can be for any number of different reasons. It can be about the failure of recording equipment. It can be about inaccuracy of data entry. It could also show that it may be a question that a significant number of people did not want to answer. It is important to know these things as when you're doing your research it can point to areas for improvement, it can point to areas perhaps where questions need rephrasing, reformatting or rethinking about in order to enable people to answer those questions. You'll see in this column what we call valid percentage. Now generally we run analysis on the valid number of cases so valid number of cases you will see are for those for whom a response is recorded. So this is taking away any form of missing cases. So the percentage um, column to the left of that shows you the percentage of everybody. So that's less than 20, 20 to 49, 50 to 64, 65 to 80, over 80, total number, missing, and then the overall total. So you can see in this case we have um, a total number of people who responded as being 97.4% of the total, 2.6% were missing. The valid percentage just looks at those people who have actually recorded an answer. So taking away our two point taking away our twenty cases leaves us with seven hundred and fifty five cases and that is our total number of cases to which we are ascribing percentages. The next column across is the cumulative percentage column. Now that is the percentage value for each category plus its predecessor. So, say for example, if we start with our first value, um, which is in the less than 20 row of 19.9, for those aged less than 20, the next would be those aged less than 20 plus those aged 20 to 49. So it'd be 19.9, add on the next value, and that would give you a total of 53%. So 19.9 plus 33.1 gives you 50.0%. So in this lecture we have we've started to have a little look at um, at some of the ways in which we can conduct univariate analysis. The next series of lectures we're going to start looking particularly at measures of central tendency and then following on from that measures of dispersion.